Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, long time no see. For those of you that are newly subscribed, my name is Tash and I like to talk about all things makeup and sometimes I like to bring in social issues as well, such as my recent last video on mental health. I feel a little bit rusty today, I'm gonna to be honest, because I haven't filmed in a while. But today I wanna to do a like a new series on my channel called Second Chance Sunday. Um, it's not gonna happen every Sunday, it's just gonna be when I give products a second chance. Um, and today it's going to be on the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover Foundation and the Infallible Matte Base, Mattifying Base Primer. So as the name itself would suggest, I'm going to take products that I've used before that I didn't really like and I'm going to give them a second chance. In this case, I did do a first impressions video of this. You won't find it on my channel because I never uploaded it. The footage was just terrible and I just didn't feel like it was worthy of an upload. So obviously I can't do a, another first impressions on something I've already tried because I that's kind of dishonest. So it's been a few months now, so I just wanted to come back to the products and give them another try and see if they work for me this time. The primer, I'm probably going to give a third chance because I actually haven't used it with any other foundations. I don't know whether I found that the primer didn't really work with this foundation in the first place or whether I just don't like the primer in general. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna read you the claims of each product. And as I apply, I'm gonna talk you through what didn't work last time um, and maybe change things to make certain things work this time. There's only so much I can change though because I feel like there's only so many ways I can apply foundations. First of all we're going to talk about the mattifying base primer. So it's going to be good for say normal to oily skin types in particular. I'm more of a normal to dry skin type although in the summer a bit like now it's a bit humid I do get a bit oily in the t-zone although I have moisturized as well so I feel like that's making me look a li little bit more oily than I am because it's more moisturizer than oiliness. The primer is basically a silicone primer I mean I think there's only two ingredients here and it's just silicone. It retails at £8.99. Uh, L'Oreal say that it's their first priming base in a gel that mattifies the skin. It prepares and smooths the skin by minimising imperfections, pores and shine, so a bit like the professional. Uh, it's going to smooth those areas out, reduce the appearance of pores. It has a mattifying effect. It instantly transforms skin texture for an even surface with a velvet these with a velvet soft touch. If you have used a silicone primer before, like Maybelline Baby Skin or the Professional, they do have that velvety feeling where you feel like your foundation is just going to glide over them. And then that leads to the claim where it says foundation glides seamlessly across it. And then how to apply, just apply little dots, less is more, because it is a very thick primer. I find it thicker than the Maybelline Baby Skin as well, although I find Maybelline Baby Skin easier to work with, but we'll get onto that in a second. So yeah, it just says to smooth onto the skin in an outward motion. I'm gonna be using the primer on one side of my face because I wanna see if the foundation works well with or without a primer. I'm one of those people that, especially in the winter, I don't necessarily need to wear a primer because my foundation tends to stay all day. But then I use for products like Estee Lauder Double Wear and Mac Studio Finish, and they are pretty long wearing foundations, especially the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Like in my opinion, you can't be that foundation for long wear. Okay, so let's get started on this primer. I'm going to apply a little bit to the left side of my face. Oops, I almost feel like that's a little too much. So I'm just going to apply it to the left side of my face, and I'm just going to use little dots, especially around this t zone area. Okay, so I'm just going to pat that in very lightly and I've used the tiniest, tiniest amount. You really don't need much of this primer. A little bit really does go a long way. So let me tell you while I'm patting this in, one of the reasons I didn't like this primer is because I felt like the foundation balled up on top of it. So I don't know if that's to do with the primer itself or whether it's to do with the foundation. At some point I'll have to use it with another foundation and I will get back to you on whether I like this primer or not. It does feel nice, it feels really nice and silky and soft. Okay, so primer is applied to the left side of my face. Moving on to foundation, this is the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover Foundation. So I get B12 injections for health related issues and since getting B12 injections, my face has broken out like crazy. It's actually much better now. I mean, it probably doesn't look it because it's quite red in places, but a lot of this is flat. It's just like scarring. This really appealed to me because it is a foundation that you can find on the high streets, that slasher drugstore foundation if you're from America. I'm always looking for a good drugstore foundation, something that's reasonably priced, something I like the coverage of, something where I like the, the uh, shade range as well. Uh, Maybelline and L'Oreal have stepped up their game in the last couple of years in terms of catering to pale people as well because before at one point I would never be able to use a L'Oreal or Maybelline foundation because it would just look really orange on me. This colour is in number 9 and it's light sand. There was a shade called porcelain which was number 10 and I don't know if that was lighter or darker. When I tried it I couldn't really tell. I felt like porcelain when was a little more pink so I'm wondering if I should have gone with that. I am more yellow toned 
but I like to go for more pink or neutral foundations. I just feel like, especially on my neck because it's so pale, I find more yellow toned foundations, especially if they oxidize, I just look like an oompa loompa. So sometimes I prefer more neutral or pink toned foundations. Let me read you the claims of this anyway. So firstly, the price it is $9.99, so it's just a pound more expensive than the primer. It claims to give you a full coverage, flawless finish, without compromise, so it's supposed to cover blemishes, redness, um, which I have both of, and tattoos without overload. I actually did try this on the tattoo and I did feel like there was an overload even though I use very little product. Also, my um, it didn't match my skin colour and also it didn't really cover my tattoos that well, so I imagine that's because I'd need to do some colour correcting underneath. And it's supposed to be transfer proof as well. And I'll just give you a bit of an insight to why I didn't like it last time. So I used this last time and I felt like I really liked it when I first applied it. I did not like applying this with a foundation brush. Uh, the brush I used was uh, this one here from Real Techniques. It's their, what is this one called? Is it just their buffing brush? I don't know, but any like densely packed brush like this is kind of what I prefer to apply my foundation with. And I feel like because the formula is very, very thick and quite moussey, I didn't really feel like I could push it into my skin with a brush. I just felt like it sat there and looked kind of cakey. On the non-prime side, I use my Beauty Blender and I preferred the finish with that. I mean, I prefer using the Beauty Blender with most products, to be honest. So I'm actually just going to use the Beauty Blender for today. So it's one of the things I'm going to do. I'm going to apply the Beauty Blender over the prime side as well. The other thing I didn't like is, although this claims to be um, super full coverage, I didn't really feel like it was that full coverage. It wasn't really covering my redness and my acne very well. Also, I didn't find it to be transfer proof, I'm pretty sure. Like, it seemed to rub off and it seemed to almost break up and disintegrate throughout the day. And also, it made me look really, really, really oily. But I've decided that I want to give it another chance because sometimes you know, like I've used foundations before and I haven't liked them and then I'll use them a few months down the line and I love them and vice versa. So I sometimes think it's good to go back to products and just give them another try. So we're going to apply this. I'm just going to apply a little bit on the back of my hand so you shouldn't need much. You guys can see that it's a very moussey texture. So I hold my hand like this, you can see that it's not like sliding down or anything like that. It very much stays put and um, so it is extremely thick. Let me start on the unprimed side. Apply a few little dots. It always looks more than it is on the camera, but I assure you it's not. So I've still got a ton left on my hand. Let me just use that for this side of my face because you're not supposed to use too much. So I've got a nice damp beauty blender here. I'm just gonna start blending it in. Let me like, zoom you in. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I know I use a small amount, but it's still not really covering anything. Like I'm just not getting any coverage and that isn't just with the beauty blender, I found that with the brush as well. So, because I know, you know, beauty blenders, they can soak up products and whatever, but I mean, let me try tapping it on the beauty blender instead. So I've got a little bit of product there and I've just got over. Okay, so that's a bit better if I do that, but I also find that it can get a bit cakey as well. I'll just keep pushing the product into my skin and we'll see how we go. Right, my camera just cut off. I'm still on the side of my face. I'm really trying to push the product in just to make sure it's really well blended. I don't know where that cut off, but what I was saying is one of the things I didn't like about this foundation the first time I used it, that it does tend to cling around dry patches, especially where I've got blemishes that are healing because naturally with blemishes, you tend to have dry patches around them. And you think if this is targeted to that, you know, to people with blemishes and redness, then you almost feel like it shouldn't do that. It really does not want to cover my blemishes and a lot of these are flat as well but it just does not want to cover the redness already i'm starting to see that it is caking up around this area it's just clinging on to all the dry patches i don't think this review is going to go well today i don't think i'm going to change my mind now i could build this up on this side because this is just one layer i did do that before and what i found is although i, I did get a bit more coverage it just looked really really cakey i would not want to go out with this foundation so i'm just going to dip my beauty blender into a tiny bit of the product. As for the shade, it matches my face, but it doesn't match my neck. So my my face is naturally darker than my neck. I've got a lot of yellowness in my face, and I always like people to match to my neck. Um, which I've had a few like offensive comments about that from people at makeup counters, where they're like, "Oh, are you sure?" You know, where they'll say to me, "Are you sure? Why, why why would you want to look like a ghost?" And it's just like, "Well, because that's my skin tone." You'd be surprised the amount of years that it's taken me to uh, get to this level of painless paleness. <laughs> I'm basically a vampire. So uh, yeah, you know, I mean, when I do tan, 
as unbelievable as it sounds, like I, I tan like crazy, you know, I'm half Spanish, so, um, although I'm pale, I do have that kind of, I go very olive when I tan. I prefer to protect my skin over having a tan, and I think if I am going to have a tan, I've done it in previous years, I'd probably just have a fake tan, to be honest. Ah, uh, this is not working out very well, guys. And um, correct me if I'm wrong down the bottom, like, politely correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they market this with their own version of the Beauty Blender, so I don't really, you know, understand why it's just not giving me the coverage. You know, it's supposed to be a no compromise coverage, that's a claim, and it's just not doing that for me. Oh, I'm gonna have to go in with another layer in a minute. Which means the ultimate in cakiness. You know when you think that your skin's not... Well, if you have like normal or really dry skin and you think that you're kind of getting on top of it and you think your skin's not that dry in the moment, at the moment and you're, you, you know, it's, get, it's kind of like more on the normal side and you think you're beating the dryness, you've exfoliated, you've got a good skincare routine and then you put a foundation like this on your face and it just emphasises every dry patch on your skin and you almost feel like you're back to square one with no difference. So that's one layer of the product. And I'm going to zoom you guys in. So I want to zoom you guys right into this area. I know, excuse the close up. So here it's just looking really, really cakey. I don't know if you guys can see that. So especially around these blemishes here, it's also like, I mean, come on, you can still see all of my blemishes. You can see that it hasn't really covered my blemishes from here. You can still kind of see them. They're poking through, you know, which naturally I don't mind with the foundation. Like in recent months, I mean, I've rarely been wearing makeup in recent months, to be honest. You know, like I've been wearing kind of light coverage foundations. I don't mind my blemishes peeking through but when a foundation tells you that it's total cover it's going to conceal those blemishes it's going to kill it's conceal redness it's going to conceal tattoos even you don't expect blemishes to be poking through your skin so i'm going to go in with another layer i'm kind of apprehensive about it because i did that before and i wasn't really a fan it just went really cakey L let me know down in the comments whether you guys like this foundation or not, whether you find it works for you. And also don't forget to leave your skin type down below as well. Okay, so, oh God. Yeah, that's the second layer, but it is just, it's just so cakey. Update on the prime side. I don't find that the product is balled up with the Beauty Blender like it has with the brush. I have seen a little balled up bit here though, just like that little white, ball of product. That's what I mean when I use this foundation with the primer. It, um, but with the brush it's much much worse. I haven't done my neck yet, I'm not going to forget that obviously because otherwise I'm just going to look two completely different colours. Okay, so I mean if you're wondering why I don't go around my eye area, I tend to just go under there with concealer. I don't really like to put too much product underneath my eyes because um, too much build of product I feel like it just emphasises fine lines and etc etc. So I'll leave that for concealer. Like, I bet on camera this looks pretty good, but up close, I will show you up close again, it just looks really, really cakey, especially with that second layer. Like, I just do not feel, like, I just don't feel like it's something you can build up because it's so thick and moussey. And I mean, the texture almost, I don't know if you guys can tell, let me just apply some more onto the back of my hand and my hand's looking kind of messy. Yeah, it's just a very thick and moussey product. I feel like it's oxidized a bit on my hand actually as well, so, I'll, uh, it seems to still look okay on my face. I mean, it's not the perfect color, but it's it's not bad. I'm gonna zoom you guys in again, so you get ready for extreme close up. So here we are. This is what the foundation looks like with a second layer. So can you guys see that? Like still see all my blemishes. I mean, it's done a much better job, but it's still, like, again here, you know, I've gone over and over those spots, but it's just not, it doesn't want to cover them. Especially around this blemish here, there is so much dryness and it's just really emphasizing those dry patches. I feel like it's like breaking up around the nose area. I'm not going to apply powder because I just want to see how the faint foundation um, lasts throughout the day without a powder as well. You know, it's supposed to be transfer proof and full coverage. So if it's transfer proof, I shouldn't really need a powder. And especially if it's supposed to last up to 24 hours as well. I mean, I don't really know who wears their foundation for 24 hours, but I suppose if you've got like a really long day going on, it could be good for that. Um, a lot of foundations, a lot of companies tend to claim their foundations like last for 20, what's it, Rimmel Lart says it lasts for 25 hours or something. I, I don't know, it's almost like they've got a competition going on, but 
you know, I wear my foundations uh, for a good, you know, six to eight hours. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Right, so it is 12.35 right now. I'm just going to go away, do the rest of my makeup, do my concealer, and I'll come back and let you know how products I've applied over it. Okay, it is nearly quarter to three. I am back. It's taken a while. I've just had one of those days where everything's gone wrong makeup-wise. I'm currently doing a review and some kind of a look with the Naked Heat palette. I feel like products have gone... Let me pull my mirror closer here. I feel like, yeah, all the products have gone over it okay. There are bits around my lips that, like kind of settling into like little lines I didn't even know I had around my lips. It's wearing off a little already around my blemishes and I haven't put any powder or anything there so I haven't disturbed that area. I've literally just done some contour and some blush and some highlight on my cheeks, a little bit of contour around there, a um, little bit under you know around this area around the double chin um, but I haven't kind of put any powder on here to disturb anything so it is kind of it's not even breaking up around there, it's just like it's disappeared, if that makes sense. I will, I will pull you in closer. I don't feel like I look too shiny. I mean, my forehead is a little bit shiny and it feels a little tacky. And let me just see, because it's been on a couple of hours now, whether it really is transfer proof. It just looks kind of, I don't know if you guys are going to pick this up, but, but it is not exactly transfer proof. Can you see that? I wouldn't really call that transfer proof, to be honest. I mean, it's not crazy, like some, some foundations can be really crazy on rubbing off and whatever. But yeah, that's not, it's not great. As far as the side with the primer goes, I definitely feel like it's applied way better with a beauty blender. Like with a brush, it was just a disaster. Everything balled up. I've literally only found like, oh, there's another one. There's a couple of areas where the product has balled up, but it's nothing compared to how it was with the brush. That was just an absolute nightmare. <sighs> I don't know guys, still breaking up around my nose area, just looking really dry around my chin area, kind of cakey, especially around the cheeks. I'm not falling in love with it, to be honest. I'm probably going to do a final check-in. It's been two hours, so maybe in about four hours I'll do a final check-in. That's like six hours where I know it's supposed to last 24. I kind of highly doubt that. I mean, I, I had problems with it lasting throughout the day last time I tried this. The review's just kind of confirming everything I thought about it um, the last time I tried it, so I just don't really think it's a foundation for me. It's, um, it's a definite miss. I wouldn't go out and repurchase it. Let me zoom you guys in. It has come off a little bit on my forehead as well, so. so I don't know if you guys can tell around this area. It's just very, very uh, cakey. And around my nose, it's just like breaking up everywhere. Like, just like move it slightly there, very lightly. It's just breaking up. I don't even know if you guys can see this, but like little lines forming around here, just on the corner of my lips, um, which I don't usually get. Like didn't even realize I had them. Um, so that's not looking great. Anyway, that's my little update. Um, I'll be back in four hours to check in with you and, and we'll see how it looks then.